In this example, we're given the parametric equations of a plane curve asked to find the first derivative of y with respect to x and the second derivative of y with respect to x and then find the values for t for which the curve is concave up and concave down. We can determine the concavity of the curve by determining the sign of the second derivative. So let's first find dy dx and because we have parametric equations, remember dy dx is equal to dy dt divided by dx dt. So again, dy dx is equal to dy dt divided by dx dt. So to find dy dt, notice how we'll have to apply the chain rule to find the derivative of e to the power of negative t with respect to t. So dy dt is equal to one plus e to the negative t times negative one, again applying the chain rule, which will give us minus e to the negative t. And then our denominator is going to be dx dt, which will just be one minus e to the t. So this is the first derivative of y with respect to x, but if we leave it in this form, in order to find the second derivative of y with respect to x, we'll have to apply the chain rule. So let's see if we can simplify this. And we can by multiplying the numerator and denominator by e to the power of t. Again, this isn't required, but it is going to make finding the second derivative much easier. So looking at the numerator, we would have e to the t, and then minus, when multiplying these two, we would add the exponents. Notice that negative t plus t would be zero, so e to the zero is equal to one, so we'll just have minus one. We'll leave the denominator in factored form, so we'll have e to the t times the quantity one minus e to the t. Now, it still doesn't look like this will simplify, but e to the t minus one and one minus e to the t are opposites, so what we'll do now is factor out negative one from the numerator. That would give us negative one times, let's put the one first, so it'll be positive one minus e to the t. And notice how now we have a common factor with the denominator. So these two factors simplify to one, and now if we move e to the t up to the numerator, it's going to change the sign of the exponent. So we can write this as negative one times e to the power of negative t, or just negative e to the negative t. So the simplified form of dy dx would just be negative e to the negative t. But notice how dy dx is in terms of t, so in order to find the second derivative of y with respect to x, we'll have to find the derivative of the first derivative with respect to t divided by dx dt. So let's do that now. So the second derivative of y with respect to x is going to be equal to, let's start with the denominator, which will be dx dt, which we already found, that's going to be one minus e to the t. And now to find the derivative of dy dx with respect to t, we'll have to apply the chain rule. The derivative of this would be negative e to the negative t times negative one, or just positive e to the negative t. So now we've done the first part of the question. We have the first and second derivative of y with respect to x, but now our goal is to determine the concavity of the curve to start, we need to find where the second derivative of y with respect to x is equal to zero or undefined. So let's do that next. Again, we want to determine when the second derivative is either undefined or equal to zero. Well, it's only going to be equal to zero when the numerator is equal to zero, and e to the power of negative t is never zero, but this will be undefined when the denominator equals zero, and one minus e to the t is equal to zero when t is equal to zero, because e to the zero would be equal to one, so when t is zero, we'd have one minus one in the denominator. So this tells us where the function may change concavity. So now we'll determine the sign of the second derivative to the left and right of zero to determine whether the curve is concave up or concave down on those two intervals. Let's go and do this on the next slide and we'll set up a table. 
So I've already set up the table. Again, our goal is to determine the sign of the second derivative when t is less than zero and when t is greater than zero. So we'll start by picking a test value or any value of t in this interval. Let's go and select t equals, let's say, negative one here and t equals positive one here. And now we'll determine the sign of the second derivative by performing substitution. So the second derivative of y with respect to x when t equals negative one would be equal to e to the power of negative negative one or positive one divided by one minus e to the power of negative one. Now we'll go ahead and use a calculator to determine this approximate value. We're only really concerned about the sign. So the numerator was just e, which is second division, and then divide this by the quantity one minus e to the power of negative one. And we can see this is positive, it's so approximately 4.3. And since it's positive, that means the function would be concave up on this interval. And now we'll do the same when t equals positive one. So we'll have e to the power of negative one divided by one minus e to the one. Well, we should recognize this is gonna be negative because our denominator is gonna be negative. But let's go ahead and check it on the calculator. So now we have e raised to the power of negative one divided by the quantity one minus e to the first is just e. And we can see it's negative. Let's say it's approximately negative point two. So if the second derivative is negative on this interval, the function is concave down. Now let's go ahead and graph this to verify the results. Before we do though, let's determine the point on the curve when t equals zero. Well, when t equals zero, notice that x would be equal to zero minus e to the zero, which is equal to negative one, and y would be equal to zero plus e to the zero, which is equal to positive one. So notice when t equals zero, the point on the curve would be the point negative one, one, or this point here. Notice how the arrows show the orientation of the curve. Notice that when t is less than zero or negative, you can see how the function is concave up. And when t is greater than zero, along this piece of the curve, the function is concave down. Of course, if we wanted to verify the orientation of the curve, we can use the graphing calculator. And I'll finish by showing that. I've already typed in the curve into x sub one, y sub one, and now I'm gonna press graph, and if I press trace, notice how right now t is equal to negative 2.1, and as t increases, we'll see the orientation of the curve. So this is why the arrows on the curve are in the direction that they are. As t increases, the curve is traced out in this direction. Okay, hope you found this explanation helpful.